Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Now, there's nothing I like better than checking out new sim racing equipment, especially if it's high end, but I also like checking out more affordable entry level equipment. And that's what we're going to do in this video today. We're going to be looking at the next level racing GT Racer sim racing cockpit. Now, before we get into the video, the necessary disclaimer next level racing sent me this item for free, so I didn't pay for it, although they don't get to see this video before it's published. They've got no input at all in relation to what I say. So what is the GT Racer? Well, it's a more affordable entry-level style cockpit. So if you buy this, all you need to do is attach your steering wheel, pedals, shifter, and away you go. So it's made from tubular steel, which has been powder coated. The seat has got some kind of, I assume, fake Alcantara and leather, but it actually looks really nice. It's nice to have a decent seat on a more entry level rig. The seat's adjustable, forward and backwards sliding and tilt, which pretty much goes all the way back. In the kit, you get the seat, you get a handbrake shift amount, and you also get a butt kick amount. All the tools are all included as well, so you don't need to even go to your own toolbox to build it. Now, talking of building, really straightforward. Took me around about 40 minutes from start to finish, but dead easy, the instructions Brilliant. So let's talk about the rig. Now, I did mention that it was more affordable or entry level. And because of that, there's always going to be some compromises. The seat, although it's pretty good quality for this price point, and it's kind of got that fake leather Alcantara, it does move around a bit. You know, when you're just moving it with your hand, the back moves. It's not really that rigid. And I know it's it's got adjustability with a tilt but it's when it's locked in that position it shouldn't really move the rig itself it comes in two sections front and back you slide them together and bolt them in the middle and the uprights for the wheel deck bolt to the front and then you have the supporting arms down the side the shift amount just attaches to one of the uprights either left or right whichever one you want but it also comes with a handbrake kit so you can attach that to the shift amount which makes it wider so you can attach your shifter and your handbrake now the wheel deck, really good, pre-drilled for pretty much any piece of equipment out there. Although the Acetec La Prima wheelbase would only fit on one side. One row of bolts would only fit. I couldn't get them both lined up, but two was enough. The wheel deck is adjustable forward and backwards, up and down and tilt. Really, really good adjustability on the wheel deck. However, the pedal deck, it's fixed. There's no adjustability there at all. Again, it's pre-drilled for pretty much any pedal set out there, but the Acetec La Prima pedals, again, would only bolt on one side. One side was enough. It didn't go anywhere, but nothing out there yet is really supporting the Acetec products. I'm sure it'll happen, but right now the mountain's different to everything else. Now, the pedal deck is fixed. I think it's about 20 degrees of incline, which is fine if you've got an entry-level set of pedals because they all seem to lean back away from you. But if you've got mid-range to high-end pedals, it's going to be a nightmare. Now, I use the La Prima pedals from Acetec on there, and I could hardly break. The incline of the pedal deck meant that the pedal was leaning over. And it's not like I'm short of pedals either, but if you look at these pedals, they've all got one thing in common. They're all pretty much vertical. Yeah, you can dial it out to a certain extent, but not 20 degrees. So ergonomically, I thought the driving position was really good, apart from the incline on the pedal deck. If you've got an entry-level set of pedals, that won't be an issue. So ergonomically, the driving position was really good. I was able to get the wheel deck in a position where I would get my normal wheel deck. Seating position was good. My feet were a little bit lower than they usually would be in my rig, but overall, really comfortable. Now, this rig is sold to be compatible with direct drive wheelbases. Well, I use the Acetec La Prima wheelbase on there, which is on the threshold of what this rig on paper can take. And I did notice a bit of movement in the wheel deck. Not enough to bother me when I was driving, but when I look back at the footage, I could see it moving. But I couldn't really notice it when I was driving. And under, I was going to say heavy braking, I didn't really brake heavy. I set the pedals up quite light because it was so awkward to drive with a heavy pedal. But you can see if you press the brake pedal with any significant force, the middle of the rig starts to raise up. And trust me, I wasn't putting that much force into the pedal. Nowhere near the braking force that I would usually have. But like I mentioned a couple of times, if you've got an entry level set of pedals where there isn't much force, it's not gonna be an issue at all. But if you have decent pedals, 
it's a problem. Let's talk about price, 379 quid. Um, pretty good value actually for what it is, the whole rig, seat. I'm gonna compare it against things that I've used before, the PlaySeat Trophy, Logitech G Edition. I've tried that one, but that was like over 500 pounds. Similar kind of deal, not foldable, but a, a lightweight rig. That didn't have a proper seat, this does. I've also owned a GT Omega Art Cockpit, Similar story, although that's not tubular steel, it's actually square, but that has a seat included, but I think that's a bit cheaper than this. This one, in my experience, is better than the GT Omega. Both are very similar style, both aiming for the same demographic, people that are just starting sim racing. So everything considered, if your gear is entry level, great. If your gear isn't entry level, don't buy it. That's as simple as I can make the conclusion. I like it, but I don't like the pedal deck. But I want to say thank you to Next Level Racing for sending me this to test and have a look at. I'll leave a link down below in the description if you want to go and check it out. If you're on the market for a sim racing cockpit, then this could be the one for you as long as you've got the right hardware. As always, thanks for watching. See you later. Cheers.